Hey guys, what's happening? Uh, I'm doing this video because somebody made a request in the comments of one of my other videos about doing a rotating door tutorial. So before we get started, I just want you to make sure that whatever static mesh that you're using for your door, make sure the rotation point is actually on the end here, not in the middle or someplace else. Otherwise, we're not going to get the rotation that we want for our rotating door. So uh, if you don't have a rotation point on the end like I do here, uh, make sure you go into whatever 3D modeling program that you're using and uh, just relocate that rotation point to the end there. Uh, once you've done that, we can get started. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do is once I've placed my door in my world and re, you know, rescaled it to fit my doorway, I'm going to select it in the scene outliner and go to the bottom of the details panel and select replace with composited blueprint. I'll select the blueprints folder and rename it something appropriate like BP create blueprint. Okay, then I'll double click on that in the content browser, open it up, and what I want to do is create a trigger volume so I can interact with the door. So add component, go right down towards the bottom of the shape select box, and what I want to do is just move this around, so it's around about in the middle, and I'll rescale this to We want to actually more or less interact with the door handle, so it's okay to displace it a little bit. Now, let's move this so it's about even on both sides. And so, that should be fine, it doesn't have to be too perfect. We'll go over into our graph. Now, the first thing I want to do is go into our construction script. Now if you saw my other video, it doesn't matter if you if you didn't, um, in the other video where I created a door switch blueprint, we uh, created a construction script that stored the location of our, of our door in a variable. But what we want to do this time is drag out the set actor rotation because this is the uh, the value that we're going to be changing in this blueprint not the location but the rotation so from new rotation drag out get actor rot uh, rotation and on the return value just right click on it and promote it to variable drag it out there connect those up and we'll rename this um, this variable something like Initial rotation or anything it's right. And um, our box, what I'll do is I'll rename that as well as the trigger volume. Alright. Jump over into our event graph, don't worry about the error, that'll fix itself up once we compile. Just right click on trigger volume, add event, on component, begin overlap. Right click again, that event on component and overlap. Now we're going to be creating a very similar kind of blueprint at the beginning to what we did in the other, vol um, other video. So we've got our trigger volume. What we want to do is create a trigger volume that when our player enters it, it can interact with the door. So what we we'll do is drag out from here, uh, enable input and we're going to have to take contact sensitive off select enable input from here drag out disable input there we go and from player controller drag out get player controller contact sensitive back on again 
Okay. We'll leave the value to zero for the player index because that indicates you when you're playing the game. So you're the one who's going to be interacting with this blueprint. So next we'll drag out from here, create a gate, connect it up to open and tap enter because what will happen is when we enter the trigger volume this will fire and we want it to stop once it reaches the gate. And as long as we're still within the trigger volume, um, if we press a key like E, for instance, that I like to use, we use, uh, it'll allow the signal to continue. So, from here, what we want to do is have our blueprint check the state of the door, whether it is indeed open already or closed. So, what we want to do is bring out a branch, click on that, and as a condition we're going to want to create another variable. So up here in our My Blueprint click Add Variable, we'll leave it as a boolean and name it is Open. There we go. And we'll just compile it. That way we can give it a value if we want to, but it's fine living as it is. Unchecked means false. So what we'll do is drag this in as a getter, connect it up to our condition. So when we start off, the door will be closed, so it won't be open. Get up there. So it checks, is it open? If it is, fire off here, if it is false, fire off this way. So what we want to do next is drag in is open as a setup and control W to duplicate that so if the value is true we want to set it to false if the value is false we want to set it to true because the next thing that we're going to do is be moving the door from close to open or open to close so in order to do that we need to create a timeline just right click go down the bottom Add timeline, just name it something like draw movement. Double click on there, add a float track, just name it draw rotation. There we go. And hold down shift and click, left click, we'll add a keyframe. So we'll give the time value of zero and the value of zero as well. I'm going to shift and click to create a second keyframe and time will make it say 1.5. You can make it whatever value you like. This is the amount of time it'll take for the door to go from a fully closed position to a fully open position and vice versa. The value what we want to do is at 90. Because, uh, we want it to open 90 degrees. Zoom to fit vertical, which is this button right here, so we can see both of them. And control left click on the white keyframe to make them both yellow so they're both selected. Right click on it and go auto. And this will create a nice little curve. This is so as the uh, door opens or closes, uh, it'll over time slowly. Uh, add to the rotation value and speed up and then as it gets towards the end we begin to slow down again it just creates a nice smooth movement for our door then back into our event graph it's true we want to connect that to the reverse from end and is opened um, this one will play from start Okay, so next from update, we'll drag out and we'll set at the uh, relative rotation this time. And from door rotation in our timeline, we'll just drag that out, out and um, type in add. We want to float, it's a float value, so we want to add this float value to another float value. And the other float value is the initial rotation the initial um, value that we, we uh, added to our construction script. So uh, 
bring that in as a getter. And you'll notice, if we move in close, you might be able to see it better, that this here is purple and this is green. It means they're two different kinds of values. This is a rotator, this is a float. So if we try and connect them both up, it's not going to like it very much. So what we need to do is change this into a float value so we can add them to the two values together. The way we do that is we right click on this here, split struct pin. So now each of these rotator values has been split up into pitch, yaw and roll and you will see now that they're all float values. So we grab the yaw because that is the, the rotation angle that we want to use and connect it up here. And we want to connect this up to our set actor relative rotation, but you'll notice again it is the wrong kind of value. So we want to change this to a rotator. So if we drag out, type make rot, it will make float a rotator. But you'll see that it's attached to pitch. So hold down Alt and detach it like that by left clicking on there. Then add. Uh, this to the your because that's the one we're wanting to use. Return value can now be connected up to relative rotation. Okay, and this is basically it. This is basically our blueprint right here. All we have to do is hit compile, get rid of all the supposed errors. And now if we go into our example map here, we can test it out to see if this works the way we want it to. So let's hit play and find out. Okay, we enter the trigger volume, press E, door opens, going through, press E. Oh dear, what's going on? It's taking its time. That's because I've done something, I've forgotten to do something within our timeline. If we go into our timeline here, door movement, you'll notice this light grey area. If I zoom out, you'll notice that it extends all the way out to five seconds. And this is our default value of the, the length of our timeline. What we want to do is change it to match the last keyframe here. So we can either click on last, use last keyframe or we can change the value in here just like that. And you'll notice that the light gray area is now within that um, within the two key breaks here. I'll just hit compile just in case something funny happens. And we'll test it again. Okay. Open the door. Opens up, go through. And the door closes. Opens door closes. Okay, so we've got a basic rotating door here. Um, one thing I will point out though is if we decide to hit E um, too quickly at what, at what happens, we get some unexpected behavior happening. You'll notice that the door jumps to the last point and this is because if we go to our, our timeline here, When, when we press E, but within the trigger volume, it'll uh, check if the value is open is true or false, and it'll change it to false or to true, depending on which, which one it was originally, and then it'll fire off the, in the timeline. And then if we hit E again, it'll fire it off again, and it'll activate the timeline again, even before the uh, door has finished opening because we can hit that as that E as many times as we like and it'll just keep firing and keep firing and keep firing. So what we want to do is make sure that the door is uh, no longer moving before we can activate it again. So what we want to do is create another variable, another boolean, and we'll, this time we'll call it is uh, moving. Okay, so and what I'll do is I'll just zoom out quickly and just move these along. And I'll alt and click on this 
just to detach it. So the first thing that we want to do is, rather than check if the door is open or closed, is to check if the door is moving or not. So let's drag out a branch. And as our condition is moving on together. Actually, I'll compile it so we can make sure that value is false to start off with. Normally you do have to check that box if you want it to be true, but because we're starting off with a door that's not moving, uh, it's going to be fine leaving it unchecked. In fact, that's what we want. Uh, and next, what we want to do is change this value to uh, set to true. It's because immediately afterwards, it is going to be moving. So we'll, from false, we'll connect to the set and it'll then immediately be set to true. And we'll connect that branch up. We'll this variable up to the branch there. So from now on, if our value is true and we try and hit E, nothing is going to happen because we're not going to connect this up to anything. We can just leave it the way it is. But one thing that we want to do before we move on is at the end drag out and add a delay and give that a duration of 1.5 seconds or however long um, your timeline is going for and that will ensure that um, it won't be activated until the timeline is finished doing what it has to do and so from here we'll add is moving as a setter again We'll leave that unchecked so it is it will return to false. So if we hit E again and it's now false, it'll it'll work again. So if we hit compile, we should find that it works the way we want it to. So let's play. Let's check this out. Hopefully we won't have any problems. Open. Open's fine just like before. Close. It's fine just like before. E and nothing is happening if I hit E again it is actually working the way that we want it to. So this is our basic rotating door. Um, it operates just like a regular door in the you know, real world does but what if we want a door that opens um, in the direction that we're facing. Just say we're facing on the, we're on the other side of the door. Instead of having it open towards us, what if we just want it to open away from us every time? What we'll do is go back into our blueprints over here. And we're going to alter this, alter these blueprints. And we're going to make a few changes within the components as well. So what I'm going to do to start off with is that trigger volume get selected? That's fine. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. I'm going to drag it out so it's there, right about there. Okay, I'll just rename this trigger volume front. I'm going to right click on that, duplicate it, and name this trigger volume rear. Okay, grab that. Move that to the other side there. And that does that. So now we've got two trigger volumes. Go over to our graph. Notice that these trigger volumes are, has, haven't changed even though I've changed it over in the components. So I'm just going to delete these. And I'm going to recreate them again. So add event on component begin overlap. Add event on component end overlap. I'll do the same for the front volume as well. Okay. 
there. I'll group these together so the end overlaps are together and the inner overlaps are together. Select them. Drag these ones up here. A little bit of space in there. And we'll grab these. Grab these. We don't need too much space between there. So we'll connect up both of these to here. It doesn't matter which volume that we're in, as soon as we exit it, what we want to do is disable the input. However, um, what we want to do is create another variable. So I'll just go to my blueprints, create a variable, and uh, what is front? And we don't need to give it a uh, value because we're going to create that value depending on which trigger volume we enter, we'll set the value to either false or true. So connect this up. If the trigger volume that we're entering is the rear, the rear volume is front will be uh, false. So connect that to enable input. And control W to duplicate that. If the trigger volume is the front one, set is from the tree, connect that up to the name of the input. Okay, so uh, next we've got, as it goes through the gate, it checks, is the door moving? That's fine, we can keep that the way it is. And these ones here, these are basic, this branch is checking whether the door is open or closed. It's checking the state of the door and before we had a door that's either just open or just closed, but in this case, uh, we're having a door that's either open towards the front or towards the rear or closed. So there's gonna be more than two states. So having a branch and a Boolean value as the variable isn't gonna work for us. So we can just delete all of those. And is open, we can delete as well. What we want to do from here is create another variable, a different kind of variable. Choose the type integer, and this will allow us to have more than one value. And just name it, uh, oops, name it door state. Door state, or compile, because I want to actually change the value from zero to one. And one can be our default, uh, closed value. So um, from here we'll drag this out and switch switch on int is the one that we want. There it is. And we'll just add pin. Do that three times and the default one will just go remove pin from execution. And there. We'll drag in door state as a getter. Connect this up to here as our kind of like condition, and it'll check what is the value of our integer door state. If it's one, it'll fire off this one. If it's zero, it'll fire off this one. If it's two, it'll fire off this one. So what we want to do, I'll just move these a little bit out of the way because we're going to need a little bit of extra room. I'll just move it up there. So over here, if door state is zero. What we want to do is drag in door state as a setup. If it is zero, we want it set to one. And I'll duplicate this as well. Control W. One. One. This, this is one is our closed position. Zero is open one way. Two is open the other way. If we interact with the door and if it's open either way, we want it set back to one. It doesn't really matter. We'll just connect those up to there, that one up to there. If the door state is one, which is what it's going to be initially, what we want it to do is check branch. The condition is whether or not the front trigger volume was used or the rear trigger volume. So dragon is front together. 
that up to there. I'll click on that set, duplicate it twice more over here. So if the uh, trigger volume is true, we'll now set it this one to zero. It is false. Now set it to two. Therein lies the difference. So connect this to reverse from end. Oh no, no, no. Play from start. Play from start and this one reverse from end. And with these two, what we're going to want to do is basically we'll select all of this, Control W, and duplicate it. And if we want, we can change the name of this to or move movement two, maybe or something better if you want. Um, and then we'll connect this one to play from start. This one reverse it from end. And there we go. This should work the way we want it to. Compile, compile to get rid of those supposed errors. And we'll check it. We'll just see if this works the way we want it to. I'll do an example man and hit play. Okay, run up to our door. door opens out. We'll run through it. Door closes. Uh -oh. oh, it's not working the way we want it to. Oh, haha. <laughs> yeah, because I literally duplicated that timeline. If we go back into this timeline, we'll notice that it is also. Uh, give This keyframe has got a value of 90. What we want to do is give it the opposite, negative 90. That's better. Oh, just in case. And yeah, it's got the nice curve. This time it's, the line is going down instead of up, as you can see there. So, uh, indeed, different. But everything else, everything else we want to be you know, remaining or keeping exactly the same. Um, okay, if we wanted to, we could do without this and just connect this one up to here. But, you know, that's fine. We'll just leave it how it is. It should work the way we want now. So. Let's press play, run up to our door, hit E, hit E again, oh, it's not giving us the unexpected behaviour we had last time, doors closing, and our door is now opening up away from us every single time. And there we go. So. That is our rotating door tutorial. I hope you got something out of it. Uh, if you did, maybe give this video a thumbs up. Um, leave a comment, let me know what you thought. If there's anything else you'd like to know, if I can answer it, if I have the ability to answer it, um, I'm happy to do so. If you want a tutorial on something, if I can provide that, I will. Uh, it just really depends on time for me at the moment. I'm starting uni very, very soon in the next, I think, week and a half or something, and my time will be quite limited. And uh, uni is pretty much going to be coming first for me, but I still want to be doing these tutorials, I still want to be learning the engine, and it, I think it'll be a good break from uni. So, uh, if there's yeah anything you want to know, let me know, and I'll see what I can do for you. But um, yeah, until next time guys, take it easy, good gaming, good game creating, and I'll see you next time.